Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the 8x8 Buffett Matrix by Tesseract. So the 8x8 Buffett Matrix by Tesseract is exactly what it is that it says that it is. So you can use this in many different ways, but how I personally like to use this is to quickly change my patching and just turn things around. And I'll show you what I mean by that, because I just want to get patch cables in here and then just use the dials to uh, to change it from one input to, to another and just route it by that. And it's that much quicker than to repatch, uh, to be quite honest. You can, of course, also use this as any other precision buffered uh, molds. And here you, of course, have the combinations to do uh, one to uh, one in, eight out, or maybe uh, two, uh, one to four, etc., etc. The well, the, the possibilities are not limitless because this is just well, uh, eight faculty of combinations, I would assume. And um, also good to mention that next to the eight by eight buffered matrix, Tesseract also has a twelve by twelve uh, buffered matrix. So it's the big brother of this one. So where I would recommend this for medium-sized systems, I will probably recommend the 12x12 12 12 for larger systems, uh, but I'll leave that up to you and see what you might need in your uh, in your racks. Um, so for now, I would say I do have to thank Tesseract for making this available and sponsoring this episode. And other than that, I would say, uh, well, uh, hope you're sitting down because uh, here we go. So here we have the 8x8 Buffett Matrix by Tesseract. And it is what it is. It is a very straightforward uh, module, but it is so rich in its versatility. So what I want to do is I just quickly want to well, start my machine and I just want to show you how this thing works and then just patch it up in a useful way. So I've got the ROT LFO uh, from uh, Mobula Mobula right here. I'm just going to grab the, uh, the pointy outputs and I'm using well these nice LED cable so you can actually see what's happening and I'm going to connect this to the first input and as you can see all of these uh, well let's call them channels are set to the first channel so the the first one so independently this has now become a one to eight buffered malt so if I grab one of the other LED cables you'll see that they behave exactly the same but if I then change this one and set it to channel two, it doesn't do anything. And this, this is now exactly what we want to do with this. And you can then indeed, of course, say, well, I want to have a uh, two times a, uh, a one to four malt. You can do anything you want with this. But what I really enjoy doing is well, performing, because this will add some flexibility and some easy dynamics to your performances. So what I want to do is I just want to go to Pam's new workout and let's just um, clear that for now. Reset, reset, yes, okay, and go back. And I'm just grabbing one cable from the first channel and I'm going to grab that a bit longer cable for that and this is just going to be the one so there you go so this is what we can start with so I can now patch all of these to the three voices that I have and I want to create something like a like a, like a drum patch so I'm just going to Patch the first one to the proc, which is set up as a bass drum. And I'm just gonna patch that through to my mixer there. And I'm grabbing my output channel so you can actually hear what we're doing. So that's doing that. Grab the next one. That's going to the Metalotron so my hi-hats and 
and as it's still on the same channel it has the exact same trigger of course and then as my third voice I want to use my plats I'm just triggering that and we've got all three of them now running in sync of course so what I now want to do is I want to grab the second channel from Pam's new workouts patch it into the second channel of the 8x8 buffered molds and I'm just going to set this to a divided by 2 there we go so what I can now do is I can say well even though we might want to keep it like it is but let's set the um, the third, the C channel, let's set that to, th to the second one. That's great, isn't it? I'm gonna do the same for the third channel here. And patch that to, well, what, if, what shall we do? Divide it by four. Let's do the bass drum. Oh, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Now, let's grab channel four. How about we then set channel four to also be divided by four but give that a 50% phase change. And now, of course, we can also do other things uh, because even though this is, of course, a normal buffered mold, so you can indeed do audio signals through this as well, just as well as you can do CV. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do CV because uh, that makes more sense, right? So I'm just going to push one of these into the decay for the Metalotron. I'm going to grab channel H. getting somewhere and we can even say well how about we grab some melodies there too so I'm just gonna Grab a cable straight from the eighth channel straight into the full proactive in, and let's set that to and quantize that as well. Speed this up a bit. So we're grabbing number C and let's go back to We can just keep on going here, right? So one of the things we now want to do is I just want to grab one of these output channels and use that as an input for the VCO's little helper by CM Modular right here. 
So we can now use the divided by two and divided by four as clock dividers. So we have even more things to work with. So we can now patch these to channel five and channel six. And we can now just play with the D outputs and maybe even set that to, to this one. So we can actually have much slower modulations than we had before. So let's go to the fifth and to the sixth. You can see it on the offsets there. And these modulations are of course great if you want to modulate, let's say, the uh, harmonics on, uh, on plats. Let's just do that. Let me just grab a cable here. So that's going to the harmonics and then the other one is going into the timbre. And with the flick of a switch, we can now change this behavior, of course, and that's the, one of the beauties. And what I really like is that it gives you the verbal, oh, sorry, the visual confirmation of what, what's happening per channel. And it just, and it just looks nice. <laughs> so this has become something that I truly love. It's, it's so easy to use it makes it a bit more dynamic so because i can just easily just change this around and we're already getting some something else right so i can This just asks to be played, right? That's one of the things I, I truly love. This is going to be a bit of a shorter video, of course, but I'm just going to go back to the uh, to the studio and wrap this up and uh, talk to you in a bit. Cheers. So I truly hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. It's always fun to work with these utility uh, modules, uh, more so because they do depend even more than other modules on, well, on their companions to really make them shine. And I can only hope that I did this beautiful module justice. As mentioned, I do have to thank Tesseract for making this, uh, well, this episode possible. So thanks again. And I would like to thank the audience again for, well, for bearing with me. And as always, if you want to support the channel, the most important thing you can do is of course, like and subscribe and what you can now also do to support the uh, the channel is you can either buy me a coffee with the link below or you can become a patron at Patreon, uh, which is now live for a week. So have a look at that. And if you've got any questions, just uh, drop a comment down below, reach out to jesper at themodularclubhouse.nl or 
join our Discord server where the community, well, the conversation is always ongoing. So uh, feel free to drop in. It's not just for patrons, it's for everyone. So I'm going to drop the uh, URLs down below. Hope to see you there and hope to see you for my next video. Cheers.